Okay, hi. <laughs> so, all right, this is um, cat out of the bag. Something new is going on here. Thank you so much for your patience, everyone. Basically, what we're trying to do here with WizKids is get it so that we are streaming both to YouTube as well as to Twitch. So there was a little hiccup in the setup. So hopefully you can hear me. Can you hear me, darlings? And hopefully I have this figured out. Uh, so the joys of technology. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Uh, this hopefully will be a lot of fun. For those of you who are joining us over on our Twitch channel, hi and welcome. Thank you so much. If you haven't, please make sure to, you know, touch that little heart and you can follow along. What we're going to be trying to do is uh, basically try and get of our get get of our get our streams going both on YouTube and Twitch and theoretically uh, Facebook all at the same time, just so that we're able to reach out to people on platforms that they're more comfortable using. And of course I'm doing the guinea pig thing. So <laughs> I am the one who is test running this and I have no idea why ads are starting to run on my YouTube music again. Got to look into that one. Hasn't happened before because that's what I've been using in the past. Anyways, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your patience while I got the little tweaks and foibles figured out. And let me know um, if there's anything else that you need on your end. I am basically, you're gonna be seeing me kind of looking and bopping around here and clicking things and whatnot, just to get a feel for everything. But I'm seeing some lovely people on both of our chats right here, which is fantastic. So thank you everyone for joining in today. I am very much looking forward to all of this. And she says that she's realizing I need to open up something else most likely here. Uh, yeah, this is this is an adventure, my darlings. I, I'm finding this quite quite interesting. Uh, let's see. Is this gonna take me where I need to be? No. All right. Well, you know what? It's under control. I can keep tabs on things over here. So as long as audio is good, as long as video is looking good for all of you, I'm gonna kick into gear here. So I've already said to the Twitch people hanging out in their chat, if they don't mind, you know get that little heart going. If you are new to the YouTube channel, please just be sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, you'll get hopefully, hopefully notifications. I will say uh, YouTube has been doing its YouTube thing. Every so often notifications will get funky. If you find that you're not getting notifications for channels you know you're following and that you have subscribed to type of situation, you may have to go back and re-ring the bell. I'm not kidding. You may have to just go and, you know, reset that. And usually that is what helps get things kicked back into gear if your notifications are not processing through. Now, that being said, it could quite possibly be because of this new program that I'm using that, yeah, it's, you know, being a little finicky and it's not sending out its notifications. But do keep in mind, we are planning on doing Mini Mayhem every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. Okay. So if you are not here last week, because this is what we did on our YouTube channel for part one, what I'm going to be doing is painting up the uh, Magic the Gathering Unpainted Miniatures Isperia Law Incarnate. Last week, I basically got to the point where we got her skin tone taken care of as well as part of her hair. The plan today is to take a look and also do her hair as well as the wings and the feathers that are sort of dancing along her back. And she's, she's right here, my dears. So this is who I'm working on today. I'm going to have a camera overhead for her so you can see her a lot better. And it's just one of those things where quick sip of tea because, you know, when technology gets funky on you, you get like that. Streamers know this. You get that like panic feeling. You're like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And that dry mouth kicks in. Yeah. Hi, it me. One moment, please. Mm. Ten year time. So that puts you what? Mountain run. Okay, so that being said, before we go into taking a closer look and working on Asperia, I did promise for some unboxing fun. Did I not say? So those of you who were here last week, you heard me say, I will start doing some unboxing. And the first thing we're going to take a look at is, and you've seen these starting to float around, okay? So we have icons, D&D Icons of the Realms Boneyard that will be coming out in March 2021. I snagged the green adult Dracolich and I thought it would be something lovely to do and share with all of you. So this is the box, you'll find it in, it's this gorgeous purple box. It has some interesting artwork over here along with a little side panel here of the window so you can see better into the box. The front you see, the, oh, you can also see, hi, we'll get like an inception thing going there. Um, I like how everyone's doing like their time call. Uh, and then we have art 
of the green Dracolich. And the top is just the logo. Bottom is your legal and the lovely red ampersand that everyone knows and loves from D&D. And now we're going to release the beast from its box. I don't know why I just tapped into Cantrell for that one, but let me get this out so you can see. And it do come, I'm trying to do this quietly. Because my new microphone is super, I could do ASMR with my new mi microphone, I'm not kidding. So it's just some basic cardboard. All right, that's the artwork inside. I like to show you the artwork. And then it also comes in a Lister clamshell. All righty, and now, we take that off and I just throw it to the side with little regard to <laughs> So here is the green Dracolich. And it is beautifully zombarific. It is decaying. It is grotesque. It is menacing. It is all these lovely things. And I am loving it because it is so cool. Quite frankly, the Boneyard set, they are beautiful. And if you want to, they are available for pre-order. So I'm always going to say this. You know I'm always going to start this way. Do make sure that you reach out to your FLGS first. Request that you place your pre-order with them and all that goodness. If you do not know, if there is a local store near you, that's where I'm going to point to right here. Okay? So if you use this link that I am pointing to right now, you can plug in your information. You can even determine how far you're willing to travel and what have you. And it'll show you stores that carry WizKids products. Keep in mind, I know with the way the world is, I mean, that's kind of my code for things now uh, because certain channels, certain certain platforms like to um, penalize channels for saying a certain word. But if you plug in your information and you find all that, reach out to the FLGSs that you find. Many of them are doing things such as scheduled pickup, curbside pickup, some are even doing shipping for uh, obviously an additional fee, but please reach out to them, let them know that you want to give them your business. If if you do not have an FLGS near you, that's okay, it happens, we know that. That's where you can actually go to D&D, uh, yeah, dndmini.com. If you go there, that will take you to all of the D&D products that we have for WizKids uh, working with Wizards of the Coast, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, that is something where, and I'm gonna talk about two quick promos and I'm gonna show you the promos in more detail in another week. But basically, if you order from your FLGS, you may find that your FLGS has a really cool option where you can get the Orc Skeleton promo set, okay? So that is FLGS. If you are looking out for the Kobold Skeleton promo, that is where when you purchase the Boneyard line from the shop Dungeons & Dragons powered by WizKids, dndmini.com, that is where you will qualify for that promotional set. So it's sort of a split divide, okay? Uncasketing. Consummate nerd. <laughs> oh, that, that was well punned. So, uh, Kay Calkins, hopefully that just answered it for you. Your FLGS store, they will be the ones getting the orcs, okay? If you want to get the orcs, reach out to them. How they decide to do it, um, again, it's promotional. It's not for resale type of thing. It's promotional. While supplies last, all of that lovely verbiage. Uh, so yes, check with them, let them know you're interested and hopefully they will be able to follow through and let you know all of that goodness. Um, in terms of the Cobalts, Cobalt Skeletons promo, that is where you need to go to dndmini.com and then you will be able to get the Cobalts. Of course, I will always say this, while supplies last is always, always, always something I'm gonna have to say because I can't guarantee it I can only relay the information as to how you may get these. Okay, that being said, let me go to our overhead and you can get a better feel for this. I mean, it's just, you can see already the detail on the wings. You have this fraying and falling apart of the skin on the wings. These protrusions of bones sticking out. Look at that, get the rib cage on the back and the vertebra. Look at, it's just, and here's the thing, and a few people in the chat could probably vouch for this because they know me. I don't like zombies. <laughs> I get very squidgy with zombies. I'm like, good, no, please don't. But the details going into these miniatures, 
they're stunning. You can see the texture is being brought out beautifully. All right, you're seeing this highlighting detail. And again, this is factory paint. And look at all the textures here. I mean, the neck alone. It's, it's, it's on the clear base again. And remember that frosted symbol is the actual space that it takes up because this is large. Adults are large, right? Um, or huge. I want to say huge, maybe? My, my brain is short circuiting after the uh, <laughs> after the tech stuff. But this basically is its actual footprint in gameplay. The clear base means you can put this on top of your terrain and your terrain will show through. For those of you who like to kit bash your bases, you can actually still do that with these. Yes, it's clear plastic. You may have to do a quick uh, coating of a primer of some sort, whether it's black, whether it's gray, whether it's white, but you will still be able to kit bash these bases like you have done in the past for those of you who are concerned about the clear bases. But this this is just, I, I adore it. It's such a cool miniature. And it really has that decaying, falling apart, bedraggled, just undead beauty to it, <laughs> which never thought I'd say that one before, but yes, it's, that's, that's the situation there. Um, so this one I don't have in the description yet, but it is suggested MSRP of $69.99. All right. And I will make sure I plug that information into the YouTube channel after the fact. Again, the promo sets vary. If you want the orcs, FLGS, friendly local game store. If you want the kobolds, that's where you go to dndmini.com. And quite frankly, seeing both of them, either way, you're going to win. They're just, they're lovely and they're fantastic. And hello to more people who are joining us in the chats. Uh, Shazam just joined me over on YouTube and I just saw Robo Goblin jump in here on Twitch. So yay, hi, hello. So this is the green Dracolich. Oh, it's just so stunning. So I think what I'll do is, you wanna watch me paint? We'll put him right there. Okay, so we're gonna put the Dracolich right there and I'll show it again at the end or when we're drying, all that goodness. I do need to move a box so I actually have leg room. And now the focus is going to be here on Esperia. So last week I got her skin taken care of, did some highlighting. I will probably work on her eyes more at the end. I am still debating how I wanna do that, which is why I have not done her eyes yet. Today I wanna to focus on the hair, these feathers, and the wings. And if you weren't here before, I always, with larger miniatures, I have a game plan or basically a list plotted out of what colors I want to address in terms of my base colors and my highlighting. And then the washes I sort of figure out as I go along. Um, oh yes, and if you have questions, always put question into your query so that I can see that a lot faster in the chats. Uh, let me see here, question, I already ends that one for Kate Calkins. And then we have from Chris Linscomb, uh, flagship does not see how to order the orcs from the distributor. Yeah, Chris, see if they can get onto WizKids Direct on Facebook. That is specifically for stores and distributors, and it is a good means of them to reach out to us directly. That is not something I can personally answer because that is way out of my wheelhouse, but do direct him to WizKids Direct, all right? Uh, hopefully that can help them out and uh, get something going in that direction. Yeah, uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. and if you're gonna do your questions, make sure it is all in caps because then, then that really jumps out at me and I appreciate it. Okay, so it is one beautiful, ugly miniature. Absolutely the consummate nerd. I fully agree with you. However, I am now ready to jump over to this beauty of a miniature, an unpainted miniature, and I'm very excited to get more color onto her. So what I am going to first do is finish up working on her hair. Now the hair, I already got the Warlord purple onto that. Uh, no, the hair was actually just, it was the game color line purple. Take it back. Game color line purple from Vallejo. I'm using Vallejo paints today, just for reference, uh, which is basically, it's a warmer purple with a reddish tone to it. So if you don't have Vallejo paints, you want a mid-tone purple with a red warm hue to it. Now what I'm gonna do is go back over with a uh, Stonewall Gray, which I have over here. And let me get that purple back out, because I know it's over here. Here we go. So these are the two paints. So Stonewall and purple. And I'm going to take the Stonewall and use it as my base tone and add in just a little bit of the purple and make a lighter tone so that I can go through and actually start detailing her hair a little bit with a very light-handed 
dry brushing. And remember, if you're not familiar with what dry brushing is, that is basically a, when you take a paint, put it onto your brush and you remove most of the paint, which I know sounds weird. You remove most of the paint and then you glide it along the higher surfaces of the miniature and it brings out those textures for you. Uh, needs a dragon rider and a skeleton, says P.L. Stowe about the Dranklish. Yeah, that would be quite interesting, wouldn't it? Oh my goodness. Okay, so let me... Now, when I do dry brushing, I actually don't thin my paints because you're pulling off so much of it, I don't find it as necessary. And I will always say, I will explain what it is that I am doing because it works for me. However, I always recommend that you yourselves play around when it comes to painting because sometimes what I do works perfectly fine for how I like to approach things and my painting style. You may find there's something else that works better for you. So I absolutely enjoy your company and I love having you here. It is fantastic. But if you see something else that you want to try, I will highly encourage you to do so. It is always good to play around with your paints, get a feel for things, understand how one thing may react with the other, how one technique may not be the best technique for you personally, and that is perfectly okay. All right, so I'm gonna take basically, I put the two over here. I'm just gonna blend them together with the bottom of my brush because why not? And what I'm going for here is I don't want this to be a full on gray tone. I want it to have a hint of purple into it, but I don't want it to overwhelm the fact that it's lighter and you can see it happening now, okay? And it's better to start off with too little amount of purple than too much because then you're really playing the back and forth and back and forth and that just isn't fun in the long run. So that's about where I want this to be wipe off the bottom of your brush. And by the way, if you're seeing odd stains on my hand, I had a fountain pen explode on me yesterday. That was not fun. So uh, the blue marks and whatnot, that's the fountain pen having fun with me. <laughs> okay, that's totally fine. Wherever you are most comfortable, it's one of those things where, like I said, this is the very first time we are taking this stream and we are playing around with seeing how it works over on Twitch. In fact, now that you're saying that, I'm gonna look and see how things are. It's looking okay on my side. So we'll see what happens. But thank you for pointing that out. So uh, let me go over and I'm going to use, I like using this particular brush because the angle to it helps me get into some areas that I prefer to. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to dry brush across the hair. And the reason why I am working on this first and not doing like from the wings to the armor to the skin, it's actually easier, especially for larger miniatures, to work from the inside out. So from the skin to the next layer to the layers and do, 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 keep stacking it out. Um, that's also why I'm gonna go and do the feathers next because as you can see here, they're very much surrounded by the armor. So it'll be easy for me to do the detail work on the feathers that I wanna do. And then I can go back in and clean things up when I start putting on the base color for the armor. Um, let's see here. Do you know why the figure in the army painter knows there's marvelous undead scent? I'm, I'm trying to figure out what you're asking there, PL Stowe. That's not quite clear to me. We don't deal with army painter is the thing. So that's why I'm not quite trying to answer your question for you. We work with Vallejo paints. And, um, again, the paints behind me that you see displayed here, those are Vallejo products. You can find in your FLGS license with us. We don't sell them directly, but you can find them in stores. So as you can see, the hair has all of this fantastic uh, texture, which means I'm gonna be moving my brush in a bunch of different directions to try and bring that texture out. Uh, so I'm gonna start here and I'm noticing I have, I'm gonna call it the beehive, okay? So I'm noticing in the beehive, I'm gonna go through and get that first and just lightly run my brush and you can see the texture starts to pop out just a little bit more. And again, in terms of reference photos, because I always like to work with reference photos, I am using the official artwork from the card. Okay, that's what's going on over there, across the way in the other corner. That's the artwork I'm keeping my eye on that I keep referring back to, because that's the one that honestly spoke to me the most in terms of appearance. You will see when you purchase this, there is on the back a render of the finished miniature. You could use that as your color guide if you wanted to. Again, also perfectly all right. I have also seen others just going for it and doing their own thing, their own coloring, their own scheme, paint scheme, and still getting some rather awesome results. I will also 
make it very, very clear. <laughs> I am not a Magic the Gathering player. I am one who very much admires the artwork and appreciates the excitement of the people who do play it. I have many friends who are into it and I love seeing their utter glee and excitement when they get new cards and pulls. It is wonderful. Um, so for me, I sort of get vicarious uh, enjoyment of the game. I don't have direct involvement with it outside of painting miniatures, but um, I don't know enough to speak to any questions you may have about the game. So if you're going to ask questions about the game, I can't help you. However, if anyone in the chat has uh, the ability to answer any questions they see come through, or if they have fun memories they want to share about a particular game they had played, things like that, I'm all for that. I just ask that you remain respectful of each other and uh, we'll just take it from there. So as you can see, more and more of her hair texture is coming out with this. I will be doing a wash on her at the end. I tend to do my washes at the end with my miniatures. It's been my sort of go-to approach. There are other mini painters who will do the base color, will do a wash and then do the highlighting. But because of how I kind of tend to take things in more of a sketchbook approach finish, uh, because I do that, I like to put the washes on the end because I make my highlights very high in tone and my base colors in a lower color. So I know when my washes go on, in fact, I'm thinking of my washes as I'm doing this, I know when my washes go on that the color for the highlight is going to be brought down to a dark, not a darker, but more of a mid-tone purple once I do that wash. And Kay Calkins plays it and knows a decent amount about this character. Well, that is very, very cool. So, um, good question for you, Kay Calkins. Oh, I'm getting to ask you a question. Uh, question for you, and hello, Don Dylan. Uh, question for you is, I've been getting a lot of interesting responses in terms of her skin tone. Now, like I said, I'm using what's over there, and as you can see, it has this blue hue to it. What color sh would you say she should be? Because I'm getting some very interesting um, divisions of opinion on that one. Some are saying what I'm doing here with the blue is spot on. Others are saying it should be more of a gray because of the story plot and where she's falling in that right now. So I just, I found that to be an interesting observation that's floating around. So here you can see all of the hair being brought out detail wise. I just need to go on to the other side. A uh, hello, Baron Snowhand. And hello, uh, Tyan. Oh, is it Tyan? Ty? Tyan. Um, or Tian. I'm hoping it's Tyan. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm always curious about that and the who, what, where, why, and why, who, what, where, when, and why of all that. I'm doing the same thing over here. And this is why I like the tip to the brush like this because now I can kind of control a little bit more and I'll actually flip over and let that sort of take control a little while. And I'm being very careful around the face to float it above the face. Now granted, because this is a grayish hue, it won't be too too drastic if I should by any chance happen to oopsie daisy it but I still don't want to oopsie daisy if I don't have to but this is I'm very much liking the end results here and like I said she will be getting a purple wash on her so I know okay thank you time um, so I know that this is gonna have more of a think of it sort of like right now it looks like a almost a very pale lilac I know once I put the wash on it's gonna drop it to a lavender tone so like I said I think very much with how my washes at the end are gonna work over my highlights. That's just my own personal approach, which I'm happy to share with you today. So really for the hair, I am liking how this is looking. I'm not gonna belabor it too, too much. There's just a little bit more. I do wanna get over on this strand and we'll go from there. Um, okay, so let me see here. I have a question coming in or a comment coming in. Skin color is blue naturally. It was the most recent, this is from Kay Calkins for those of you on the Twitch channel. Uh, it was, oh, okay. So because she was assassinated by a Gorgon named Vraska, she turned to stone. That's why someone was saying gray last week. Thank you. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Beautiful Kay Calkins. All right, so in her living non-stone-like form, blue. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, and then we have another question that's happening here over on Twitter with the Magic the Gathering mini line expand from Ravnica to other settings. Uh, you know, that's a very good question. I am not privy to share that information with you, but I can share with you that yes, we will have other Magic the Gathering miniatures coming out in our unpainted miniature line, which I will be very excited to share with you all when the time comes. Uh, so I think you'll enjoy them. I've personally, just like I said, this one is from our Wave 13 line. I very much personally enjoyed the ones that came through this one. And the other ones, I think you're going to definitely get a kick out of as well. 
and I think I'm good for the hair now. So I'm happy with how this looks. You can see all the texture, you can see all this detail. It's popping out beautifully. Her face is pretty much already done. It's just her eyes that I'm still debating on what I want to do with them. And that may even have to be something that I do off screen, to be perfectly frank, because eyes can be a little bit um, daunting <laughs> at times. I try and do them whenever I can on screen, but this one, this is the type of mini where I know I'm probably just gonna wanna sit down with it and take care of it myself. Um, I'm telling you, Big Beard Nerd over on Twitch, yes, they are lovely, they really are. I'm enjoying these miniatures and these particular ones. Uh, all right, so that is done. Now what I'm gonna do is move over to, working my way sort of from the top to the back, I'm gonna take a look at her feathers. And what I'm gonna do quickly is let's take a look at the image. Uh, so here's the larger shot of the image here. Also, I got a stream deck. Hello, it's making life so much easier. By the way, if you're new here, I do that. I jump into different voices. Um, can't change that about myself, ha. Huh. But uh, this is basically a larger version of the art that I'm using. So as you can see, the wings sort of start off, not the wings, the feathers have sort of this darkish blue gray and then they graduate up to a more of a lighter gray. So I'm going to make sure I sort of follow that path with how I'm going to paint these. Um, lurking while working is always totally fine and A-OK -okay in my book, Gumpla Fan Franny. Thank you so much for joining us and hopefully you enjoy listening. Um, so the eyes are for my eyes only. Yes, Viper Taj. Taha? Is it Taha or Taj? I forget. So let's go back to overhead work here. So basically it's going to be a lighter blue or darker blue gray, graduating into a bluish gray and then to a very light gray on the top. To do that, I am gonna go back to that Stonewall gray from Vallejo. And then I'm gonna add in actually the same blue I used on the skin, which was sky blue from the model line. So we're gonna start blending those together and then graduating up to ultimately, hopefully ghost gray is the plan. Oh, let's see here. Oh, well, Baron, I'm glad you're gonna enjoy that. Uh, you're always welcome to go over to the YouTube channel uh, where there are a lot of videos that you can check out of miniature painting uh, that I've already done here for WizKids. Uh, you can also go to my other YouTube channel, The Crafting Muse. That also has uh, miniature painting there too. And there's actually a few mini painters sitting in both chats. So for those of you who have joined us, thank you so much. And uh, you know, I'm all for, if you wanna go check out other mini painters, can you guys drop links or at least give the name of your channels? The mini painters out there, give the name of your channels, please. I'm all for cross promotion and helping each other out because hey, it's a good thing to do. So I'm gonna start off with more Stonewall Gray than I am of Sky Blue because I wanna. No, because that's honestly how you wanna start. And then I need to go to a completely different, vastly different brush. And it is gonna be, this is the brush that I'm using because I like the tip that goes on here, all right? It's not a fine point one, it's sort of more of a multi-purpose style brush, but it also can get into narrow spaces without the paint going everywhere. So as you can see here, I have far more stone gray than I do to sky blue. Kind of like what I just did for the dry brush with the hair. And starting off small, I see I do need a little bit more of the blue. Like I said, always better to start off with less than than too much. A little bit more there. Because that gray wants to overpower. Here we go. Okay, that's getting to the tone I want it to be. I'm gonna mix it just a little bit more and that's gonna give me the base of the feather area. That right there, okay? So you see it's this grayish blue tone, almost like a periwinkle blue, a darker periwinkle, a little per darker periwinkle. Um, oh, I'm glad you enjoyed the zombie paint night one, PL Stowe. It's great that you're able to follow along with that one. I enjoyed filming that one. Uh, that was a fun one to do. There are some other ones that I've done in the past that are kind of floating around, so you may have a chance to see those depending on your store. Uh, yeah, like I said, if you can't drop a link, just put in the name of your channel. Totally good with that. Uh, do, 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 do. The next wave for the unpainted miniatures, I want to say, are coming out. The ship, shipping is getting interesting. I'm going to be honest with you. So things keep shifting around. I want to say end of March, April. Could be wrong. I need to double check that one. Uh, soon. They'll be coming out soon because wave 13 came out, you know, in December. So they are due to come out soon, is, is the best way I can respond to you. Um, <laughs> yes, Big Beardy Bird, where are my mini painters at? Really? 
get the word out, folks. And again, because I know I'm gonna be going in and taking care of the armor with a base color, I am not being completely neat. In fact, I purposely don't wanna be completely neat. I wanna be sure I am getting this color in so that I don't have little gaps happening here and there. And I'm taking this gray blue sort of midway up her feathers, okay? Uh, so that it is, oh, let's say, let's call it, all right, not midway, let's say maybe more of like just over a third, all right? So I'm gonna start with this color, blending it and applying it where I need it. Again, not worried about the fact that yes, I have gotten it onto the armor. I am being careful by the hair, because I don't wanna do that again. <laughs> but I am getting the feathers. And the other thing I do notice, especially when I've mixed my paints, oftentimes that alone thins the paint out a little bit more. So I don't tend to thin my mixed paints. It is a nice consistency. I always say you want your paint to be the consistency sort of like um, maple syrup, uh, things like that. Maple syrup, ketchup, I'll say. If it's like the consistency of toothpaste, that's too thick. I find it helps to give, you know, information on things that are things you find in your household, really. I'm trying to make sure I get the edges here, too. And this will be getting a wash as well. I know that both the skin and these particular feathers, I'm gonna be using a gray wash on it. I might even do a gray wash with a touch of blue in it. Uh, William, you are a streamer, but you don't paint minis. Well, there you go. I also do uh, streams where I am either a player or a DM. So I know how that goes. But since we got some mini painting going on here, I want to definitely highlight our mini painter streamers especially for those who have channels, and especially for those who do WizKids mini paintings. That's, you know, thumbs up, let's see that. <laughs> oh, bum, 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 bum. Um, you, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> well, thank you, Baron. I appreciate that. My whole purpose in the mini painting world is to make it something that people feel is approachable, especially now, because a lot of people are trying to get into it, and rightfully so. Getting along the edge here. Again, I'm not concerned about the armor. So I have the front, you can see that right now. There's that lovely grayish blue and it is darkening slightly because I know Stonewall Gray dries darker than it comes out of the bottle. That is something important to keep in mind. When you start using your paints no more and you get to feeling for how they work, you realize it may come out one color, it dries to a different color as it oxidizes and dries. Just a little tip for you. Um, but because of that, I know how this stonewall gray dries. It is turning into that bluish, dark grayish blue at the base of those feathers like I want looking in the reference photo. Click sip of tea. <laughs> I have my lovely little dragon and pixie mug today. I should do that spoof off of our darling Scott Porter and you know, what's in V's mug as opposed to what's in Scott's cup. It is PG tips and um, oat milk because I can't have dairy <laughs> but it tastes good so now I'm turning this over and I'm going to not bring it up quite as drastically so this is gonna look like it's about a quarter way down on what's exposed here okay so you can see right back there it's kind of hard to show in the angle but I'm just getting this gray blue started the mixed gray blue that I have going on and same thing here I'm just gonna do a little bit at the upper feather just a very light touch barely even there alrighty and same thing just work work my way around and get this blue gray on the back of the feathers here and don't forget your edges it's very easy to forget that you have to do your edges as well, especially for larger miniatures like this. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm trying to see what you mean there, dragon. And I have to get this other. There's one more feather. This one, hmm. Well, you can see how I've got that going on the back. That last one. That last one I'm gonna have to pull off frame because there's no way I can reach that and paint under the camera just from the wings, but I will get it. Same concept of approach. 
And then again, I'm not worried about that armor. That armor is getting its own coat of base color and then I put metallic on top is how I like to do my metals. Okay, so now I have, oh, look at that color. Look at that beautiful, see, look at that. Oh, love that gray blue. Yes, the Gallant Goblin did a fantastic unboxing on Boneyard. So once you're done with me here, because I'll be going until two today, uh, once you're done here, you can always head over to the Gallant Goblin on YouTube and check out the unboxing of Boneyard, which is up for pre-order now. FLGS, dndmini.com. Yay, thumbs up, hooray. Okay, so I had that darker blue going. Now what I'm going to do is actually add more of the sky blue to what I've already mixed together, because you can see it starts getting more blue, and actually have the sky blue take over but I still want that touch of gray. This is not a Grateful Dead reference. I mean, it could be, but it's not. Take from it what you will. Um, oh, the wings. The wings could be, if the wings are detachable. That's an interesting comment. Uh, and I can see, I because I, I've done sprue type paints as well. And we did discuss that in the last stream. Um, while I cannot say absolutely do it all the time, I have found in the past just applying a little bit of heat, but you have to be careful. Uh, sometimes you are able to remove things like wings and capes, but painter beware. There's no guarantee is the only thing. I'm gonna do a little bit more of this blue. The stone gray definitely overtakes the blue, so I'm just being careful with that one. Do -do 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 -do. All right, so now I'm going to take that and feather that into the mid third portion of the feathers. Okay, so actually what I'm going to do now, rinse my brush a little bit, same brush as before. I'm going to go in and start well hold on there's a water droplet there we don't want that i'm going to go in and what i'm going to do is start applying slightly over where i left off with the other color and no pun intended i'll put a little bit on to feather it against the new color and also feather it up to the top so you can see that shift in blues and then i'll just very lightly Going to carry that blue down the center point. And then, this is a little trick of mine. I will take my finger and do a quick blot, and that will help with blending. And you can see I have like this, this little mark on my finger now. But that's a quick little trick that I can do. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with wet blending, it is not something you are comfortable with doing yet. That's a little, little trick there. Just quickly put the paint on and then pull up some of the excess and you'll get this blending of the two colors together. Okay, it does kind of look like a little <laughs> little bird footprint almost. So I'm just gonna keep doing that around. I do wanna bring this blue down the center and then bring it up. And I'm carrying it along that midpoint third. So not all the way to the top. I don't want it all the way at the top. I'm gonna do my quick little blot right there again. And also checking my sides. So that's how I'm approaching these feathers. Make sure you can all see that. <laughs> Feathering on the feathers is basically what's going on here. And these will absolutely be getting a gray wash in the end after I do a little dry brushing with uh, probably, depending if I'm gonna do ghost gray, I might just do a straight up white, quite frankly. There we go. Again, just a little bit into where I left off with that blended gray blue and then bringing it up the length of the feather a little bit more. Quick little blot in the zone where they're meeting. You can see my fingers keep picking that up. Yeah, like I said, there's gonna be a dry brushing involved too and that helps 
incorporate the colors a little bit more too. Um, <laughs> okay, Calcons, what are we gonna get more of the magic, the gathering? Well, a lot of that boils down to uh, time factor. If we have the time for doing that, we shall see. And we shall go from there. Uh, I find it hysterical that they still have it labeled as the WizKids official Dice Masters thing. I don't know why it did that. Um, I'll figure that out after the fact. Uh, let me keep going through here. Just want a little bit more here. Just took a look over at the channels to see how they're looking. I just have this last one left to do and then I'll go around and do the back. Oh, there you go, Peel Still. Thank you for sharing that. I'm just going to keep going here. Same thing. I need to get that blue down that. So the hope is, how are we on time? All right, we're getting up to the one o'clock. The hope is, is that I'll get these feathers done and then I can jump over to the wings. And I'm gonna focus on doing one wing. So I'll get the one wing done and then if need be, what I can do is always the other wing off screen. It's the same approach, same technique. And that way it'll push me forward to getting other things done. So I have, you can see the blending here. So I have that all going right now. Now I'm gonna flip over to the back and get this blue on the back same thing we might run into some wingage covering that's a technical term wingage but it's pretty much the same approach just under again just bringing it up a little bit there we go And same deal. I want to make sure the top portion of these feathers are left open right now because that is going to be the light color. Um, oh, thank you, PL, for saying that. I appreciate your uh, sharing that you enjoy my painting method. I have been at it for a while now. <laughs> I have this one back here I want to get. This one is going to be hard to show on screen. All right, here we go. Let's take a look over here. I'm gonna have to pull this off just so I can reach it because I have a wing that's sort of hanging over where I need to reach and trying to do that under camera is not going to work for me, unfortunately. But it's the same thing as you've been seeing before. Final Ross battle, I am very glad to hear that you enjoy Dice Masters. Today we are focusing on mini painting, contrary to what the title says, because uh, yeah, I gotta go back and take a look at what happened with the restream. It got a little funky on me. It worked when I was testing it out last week because uh, I used my own channels as a test run. <laughs> uh, but for some reason this week it got a little temperamental so I have to see where things went wonky on me. Okay, back over to maybe, or is the tail gonna be in the way now? Tail might be in the way. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, why not? I like that idea. Well, of course I'm gonna like that idea. I like miniatures. What minis would you want to see in Dice Masters? <laughs> How's that for a random question? Uh, something I never thought I'd say. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just with the way these wings are, I can't very well show you what's happening until after the fact. So you can see I got the blue right through here. Same concept. And I have just this last wing, which is also going to be an off under the camera. I mean, you can see I'm painting still. It's not like I'm handing it down to a little goblin and be like, here, you get this part. Um, it's, I am literally the one painting it, but <laughs> right now it's a little tricky under camera. But we are getting there. Okay, and that's the last one. You can see almost right under there. <laughs> ah, all right so now that the front has dried you can see this graduating tone 
from a darker gray into the lighter gray. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm not rinsing my brush on purpose. I'm not gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna bring ghost gray into the mix to get the top portion of those wings, or not the wings, the feathers. Because what I'm gonna do is let that sort of live a little bit in my paintbrush and kind of incorporate that blue a little bit more. It's just a trick I like to do for feathering, feathering feathers. <laughs> is that what we're doing? <laughs> And I am so happy to see that you're all being so supportive of each other. That is wonderful to see in the chat. Thank you so much, everyone, for being supportive and respectful of each other. Uh, what camera am I using for my overhead? That's a very good question, Final Ross Battle, uh, over on Twitch. I am using the Logitech C920. However, I will be getting a camera upgrade soon because my cameras are old and they're showing their age on things. In fact, the one that's on me right now is definitely showing its age. It's been interesting lately. So I'm going in, again, brush has not been rinsed. I am working with Ghost, get, ghost, ugh, ghost Gray straight up. <laughs> Pink Goblin, where can I get one? Ah, uh, they're tricky. You have to like lure them in and give them treats and I don't know. So I'm taking the ghost gray and I'm going on the top portion of the feather. Similar concept. But you're gonna see I'm gonna first focus on the blend spots quickly while I have the sky blue mix still on my brush. See what I'm doing there? Just quickly working around them because I don't want all of this blue to go away before I get to the very tip of the feathers but it's sort of like a quick little cheat for blending. And still having that color nod going up and through. And because you have that V shape going on, not this V, V is in the letter V, I'm trying to work with that as well. So you can see the blending going up. Yep, you just want a tiny hint of the blue to start carrying out to the tips. And what I'm going to do is once I get all the front feathers addressed, you'll see me go back around. Still not rinsing my brush. And I will continue with what's left of the ghost gray. But that is giving me the, gra the gradient that I want. The gradient. Good lord, woman. Okay, so that takes care. You can see how this is starting to, the color grows on itself. And then it starts to mute down towards the top, which is the whole point. So I'm gonna go around to the back. Again, still not rinsing. Still getting just a little bit of that ghost gray and working it, work it onto the back portion of the feathers here. Don't forget your edges. That happens so often. I'm not as concerned with the very back not having the same exact blending going on. Doing my quick little trick there. It was more the front I want to be sure had that for sure happening. And I'm gonna to have to pull off camera again because we're getting under the wings and what have. And that's just it, Baron. Um, I have an art background. I have worked with pastels, watercolors, oils, uh, acrylics, obviously, uh, before I ever got into miniature painting. And so much of what I learned in those genres of painting definitely carry over into miniature painting, for sure, without question. And thank you, Leonardo, I appreciate that. Uh, so you will find, if you have a history of painting in your, uh, under your belt, let's say, you will find many of the techniques do cross over, for sure. Especially if you get into using things like uh, inks and washes, you can very much use, a, I use a lot of my watercolor techniques with that, a lot, not even kidding. I'm just quickly doing this off camera because with the wings, it's it not happening, folks. It's just not happening. Did I get all of them? No, there's one left. One more and then I'll jump over to a rinsed brush because now I'm seeing that it's almost pulled off. So I will rinse the brush. The paint's getting slightly dry. I don't want that to be the case. You want the bristles of your brush to have a dampness to them. If you go in completely dry, it's not gonna work out well at all. I 
And this one has just a little bit more texture here, so I'm trying to get in there. All right, so now the top feathers have dried off. You can see how we have that gradient going on. And again, looking at the official artwork as my reference, I'm happy with that. I can, I can live with that. Now I am gonna rinse my brush because like I said, it's starting to get dry. I don't want it dry. So I'm gonna rinse this and I'm just gonna go back to the ghost gray on its own, no blue in my brush or anything like that, and I will go through and paint. <laughs> oh, we talked about that last week too, Burn. I have very much put my, that's why my tea is over on a different table now. I have very much done the trick where I have rinsed my paint in my tea and accidentally sipped my paint water. I am fully initiated into the painting club. <laughs> painting guild, painting club. Big Sphinx is definitely big, Zardox. Thank you for uh, joining us. Zardoz? Zardoz, probably. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thank you for saying that, PL. I appreciate that. Now, going back in, and I'm actually going to slightly thin out the ghost gray now. I don't want it to be like a glaze. I do want it to have more of like the, because I didn't thin this before. So we're back to that, like I said, that heavy cream reference. Just quickly blot. Going too high up my bristles. Okay, so thin that out a little bit. Now I'm gonna go back in and this is again, just ghost gray. I haven't mixed this with any color. I'm gonna go in starting at the top. And again, working with that V shape. Get the tip of that feather. And then that completes, you can see right there. So that's a whole feather blended, all right? And I know I'm doing a wash on this. After I do the wash on this, I'll go back in and I will be using the ghost gray. I was thinking about it, I'm looking at how this is drying. I will go in and I'll use the ghost gray to do a highlighting with it highlighting. I don't know why I said it that way. I will go in and highlight it with a dry brush technique. Uh, the miniature comes primed, yes. All of our miniatures come primed, so it's technically a take it out of the box and you can get to work painting. I do not recommend that you wash the minis when you take them out because you actually could compromise the prime job that is already on them. So just please keep that in mind. I know there are some people who say, oh, well, I go in and I wash them anyways. It can lift, the, from my own experience, it can lift the primer up on you. So you have to be careful. So now I'm just literally putting this on the tips of all the feathers now, just straight ghost white. No more mixing, no more blending. It's just taking ghost white, going at the top, feathering it down slightly into that V formation that these feathers have in their texture and then just bringing it back up to the top. And this is a slightly thinned out paint. But you can see those feathers now taking that on. No, Zardoz. At a time, yes, but I don't believe it's still a, a Vallejo primer on these. I have to double check that one. but you can absolutely touch up if you need to, like if you've done mold line remover or anything like that, I would recommend going in with the um, gray primer from Vallejo, yes. It has the right consistency and texture to match up better. All right, just one more to get at the top there over here. Again, just adding, I thin my paints out sometimes little by little if you ever watch Bob Ross, you know when he pulls the paint to mix, I kind of do that when it comes to thinning. I'll pull a little bit to thin and pull another little bit to thin. It's just sort of my personal painter preference. If you find you're more comfortable mixing the whole thing at once, then by all means you can thin your paint all in one fell swoop for sure. For me, I just prefer doing it a little bit at a time. But you can see, And again, looking at the reference art, <laughs> looking over there, now I need to get the underwings, or the under feathers, I should say, not the underwings. I'm just going to go in with that ghost and get the top portion here. 
And again, don't forget to get around those edges because that needs to happen. Put it up at the top here. I know it's kind of tricky with the, the tail and the wings are definitely sort of taking over for the underside of the wings, but at least you got to see me do the top portion because it's basically the same approach is what's happening under here. All right, and then I have the other two. Again, I'm pulling out a frame because I cannot reach trying to keep them under the camera and reach at the same time. <sighs> I then, Zardos, I highly recommend you get a hold of newer ones it's, it's a different game with how they are primed and everything like that. I know what you're talking about, though. Okay, I'm almost done here with the feathers. And there you go. So here we have the blended feathering on the feathers going on there. Ta-da! All set, ready to go. Now, those are gonna dry. I don't wanna do anything quite to them yet because I want the paint to dry nicely. Uh, otherwise, if I try and do any type of dry brushing or anything like that, it's gonna muddy things up and we don't wanna do that. I just put the work into feathering things together. I don't want to turn into like this generic gray blue. <laughs> that would be not good. Definitely not good. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, there there was definitely a, a restream issue with it didn't carry the title through. It worked through on YouTube. It was not working through on Twitch. Not sure why. I have some tech goblins to deal with after the stream is done. Uh, so if you're jumping in here thinking there's going to be something Dice Master wise, mm, sorry. Not the case. We're doing some mini painting. <laughs> but it's one of those things. It's, you know, the joys of streaming. And let me jump over back here. So that being done, I'm now gonna focus on looking into the wings. So you can see that, there you go. Gives you an idea of how that all pulled together. So the wings as well, you can see they have sort of this tiered effect going on here. One, two, three. So I'm actually gonna use one color up here, one color through here, and one color down through here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an old name. <laughs> It's an old name. The name got a little botched somehow between restream and streaming. So apologies for that. This is definitely not Dice Masters. Definitely not Dice Masters. <laughs> Hopefully I can go back and switch the settings and stuff and get that cleared up. We shall see. This is actually, you know, it's the first time we're doing the double stream from uh, WizKids. So working out the little foibles as we go along as often happens with streaming. <laughs> Holy feather featherings, yes. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm already pulling the paint out, I am taking khaki from the game color line from Vallejo, and I'm gonna put that onto the upper portion of the wings. I'm making those a little bit darker, and then I'm gonna go down to a lighter tone once we get to the bottom. This is coming out very thick on me, which means I absolutely will be thinning out this paint a little bit more. Especially when you're working with a feather texture, you want your paint to be thin so that it can get into those recesses and not, this is a technical term, not gunk up the details. You basically don't want your paint to be too thick, especially when you have a high detail miniature, because what can happen is a thicker paint can sit in there and start filling up your details, which you don't want to have happen. So let's not go there. I am going to move to a larger all-purpose brush. See? simply because this is a larger area. So this is the brush I will be using. Just roll a dice. You want me to roll a die? Okay. Any, you're, you're asking a dice Scotland to roll dice. Okay, I'll roll a die. Here we go. A dice was rolled. We'll roll it again. Look, yay! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. All right, so. Going in with khaki, like I said, I am thinning this out because I don't want this as thick as it has come out of the bottle. It's almost like toothpaste, that's too thick. If it's like toothpaste, nye. too, 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 too thick. So I'm blending this down. Again, think heavy cream, maple syrup. And then what I'm gonna do is start adding this to 
the upper zone through here. All right, so you can see the feathers start in through the base here, like there's this bit of armor that kicks in and then her feathers poke out. So I'm going to quickly just take a clear, careful, careful look here. Yeah, so basically you want this to start up through here and sort of edge right through here to get that started and then work the paint in. And you'll find it helps sometimes, at least for me, to pull the paint from the bottom of the feathers and now it's Dice Masters. <laughs> I mean, I was rolling pretty well last night during my game, although it wasn't Dice Masters. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling the paint from the bottom portion here and up. So that way it helps get into those recessed areas of the feathers. And again, the paint is thinned out intentionally because these are some very deep, detailed bits. I don't want paint to collect and glob and then create issues. And I just cut that feather, didn't I? I did. Okay, so if you ever have an issue where you slip up, quickly wet down a clean brush with some water, apply it to the top. If you catch it in time, it just pulls the paint away. I just need to be careful. I'm talking to the chat, I am painting at the same time, and I'm not paying as close attention as I ought to have. But yeah, it, hurt, it hurts, no, it helps <laughs> to pull the paint from the bottom up when it comes to the feathers. And I also find it helps to kind of be able to catch those end details a little bit more easily. How are we on time? Just at 1.10. Okay, cool. So like I said, I'm gonna stop the stream at two, figure out what Restream decided it wanted to do and why, and go from there. <laughs> but next week I'm gonna focus on doing the armor. And I may even do some ahead of time work, because like I said, I'll get the one wing addressed. And then I might do a little bit more of the armor just to kind of give a jump start, but I can still show you what I've been doing technique wise so that you really won't be missing out on information, more just the time painting. So I get this one feather going down here. And I absolutely will be doing a thinking, I don't know if I want to do, I might do a brown wash. I'm debating Sienna as a wash on this. We shall see. Also, if you hear weird sounds, there is ice that is starting to slide off my roof. Don't worry, not under attack. You know, it's just mother nature having some fun and letting me know that, hey, it's gotten warm enough where some of that ice is gonna slide down your roof. It's always fun what happens early in the morning. My goodness. Right now I'm just going back over where I can see a couple little points. I want to get a little bit more of the paint in there and I got to carefully work around this one. This a feather. I'm not too concerned about the armor because like I said, I am going to be going back in. More fine detail work around that. <laughs> yeah, Matt and I have joked about that for a few years now. Our schedules are interesting. Uh, we shall see. Uh, let's see here. Hey, nice guy. How many coats do you typically use for your base colors? Uh, if it's a good solid coat, I will keep it to one coat. If it's something that is extremely streaky or not as intense of the hue that I want, I will go in with a second coat of the base color. However, I will make sure that that paint has been very much thinned so that I'm not overloading the details of the miniature. Uh, that's sort of the best way I can answer you for your base colors, especially with things like yellows can often get streaky. Sometimes purples can get streaky too. Uh, you may find you have to do a couple of coats in that, but the key to that is to make sure you are thinning your layer. For each additional layer you put on for a base color, make the paint that much thinner. And you'll find you'll get a pretty decent coverage without overloading your details. 
<laughs> All right, so that is the one side of this wing pretty much addressed. I am gonna flip this to its side now, and I wanna get these details. And you can see right now what I'm doing is I'm anchoring, which means I'm using my pinky and I am putting slight, not heavy pressure, I'm basically just putting my pinky against the miniature itself to keep things more steady, to give me better control of my brushwork. I don't recommend doing it when the miniature is wet, though. Uh, if, if, say, I painted that, what I'd be doing is I'd be anchoring against an unpainted thing, so I'd be putting my pinky against the armor instead. But right now it's easier for me just to do on the back portion of this wing that has not been painted. But that's a little hand sitting tip for you. And I do get questions like that often. Um, if you find you really are having control issues, what you need to do is pull your miniature in close to you, you lock your elbows down against your torso, and then you bring it in almost as if you're in prayer. Okay, so if you were going to say a prayer and you hold the mini and you'll find by doing that, oh, that's interesting. Something is showing, oh, I know what happened. <laughs> There, I have a rainbow film on my window and there's like a slit in my curtains and right now it's just catching. Uh, so basically as if you were in prayer and then it, that'll give you better control over the miniature as well. The further out you hold the miniature from your torso, the more your hands can actually shake a little bit if you have control issues with shaking for various reasons. I find it happens if I've taken my inhaler too close to when I go to mini paint, I tend to be more pulled in close while I'm painting uh, because I do get trembly hands with my medication. But if you find that you have trembling issues, Pull the miniature in closer to your body and hold it as if you are going to say a prayer, which, hey, who knows? You may be saying a prayer to the painting gods. Couldn't hurt, right? And now I'm just going to go through and get this paint along here. Like I said, with the bigger miniatures, you definitely need to pay attention to the sides and the edges of things as well because they have more of a presence. They're not as, you know, thin. Let me thin this a little bit more. Speaking of thinned. Same thing, just carrying on with the khaki from Vallejo's game color. Yes, that is the game color. I like to pull both from my game color collection as well as the model collection, just for the variety of paint colors you get. Cast a flame spell to remove the ice from my roof. Ooh, that would, that would be interesting. God advice. That's a funny typo. You know, trust me, I do not judge because I have a phone with a very interesting sense of humor, she says. <laughs> um, it, it changes words on me at the last, like just as my thumb hits the send button, I see it flip and I'm like, you little sneak. And there have been very interesting conversations, thankfully with friends, where it's like, that's not what you meant. No, it's definitely not what I meant. That was my phone stepping in to have some tee hee fun on me. But there you go. All right, so I'm looking here. And again, I'm doing that, getting the color on the tips of the feathers down there and then working it up the wing with the thinned out paint because the last thing I want is this to puddle in all of that fantastic texture and detail of the wings. That's something I can't wait to bring out with a little bit of dry brushing later. No way we go. And if you have any other miniature painting questions, by all means, I'm happy to answer what I can, how I can, explain things out a little bit more for you. I'm always happy to do that. Oh, let's see, any more? <laughs> nah. Eh, we'll figure something out maybe someday. Who knows? We did have fun chatting about that over on Critter Hug. I will say that, the, uh, the zen of painting and for the regulars, they've seen me get into it where it's like you get to a point in painting and you get more quiet because you're so focused on the paint colors and everything getting pulled together. Um, so I definitely would recommend that one. 
Um, any advice? Okay, this is coming from Gnome over on YouTube. Any advice how to take off the barrel lids from Warlock Dungeon dressings? Uh, do you mean the interchangeable ones? Yes. You have to remember, I have a whole bunch of minis dancing in my head, so I'm trying to remember. <laughs> trying to remember everything that goes in detail-wise. If it's a matter of one of the lids has gotten wedged, uh, that can make it more difficult to pop out. Yes. What you can always do is take a Q-tip, because then it won't scratch the paint. You can take a Q-tip and try and push on one side of the lid to have it pop out the other side. If for some reason you've really pressed that in and it's gotten itself lodged, take it to a hairdryer, let the heat go on there for maybe about 10 to 15 seconds tops. What it'll do is it will expand the plastic just a little bit to hopefully give you enough wiggle, enough wiggle room to pop that off. Actually, now I'm looking at this. I might bring... No, I'm not. No, I'm not going to do that. I already know what I'm going to do here. That's why I did that. So I'm painting and giving advice at the same time. So that should hopefully help you pop the lid out. But just be careful. And like I said, don't use things like a pen or a pencil or a toothpick or anything like that because you will scratch the paint. Sometimes it's just a matter of putting pressure on one side of the lid just to set it off kilter to pop out and break the seal, essentially. If it's really in there, you may find you have to get the plastic to expand slightly. Don't do it for terribly long. You don't want to melt the plastic and you don't hold it up very close. Okay, hold it, you know, probably about a foot away and let that heat help you out a little bit there. But again, be careful of how long you're holding it there. 10, 15 seconds tops, trial and error it. You may have to go back and try it again, do a little bit longer, that type of thing. But slow and steady and gently will be your friend with getting that to pop out if it's somehow been wedged. That is my best advice to you with that. And hopefully it works. All right, so, hello, Raphael. Yeah, no, don't use an exacto knife. <laughs> no! Ay, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. That's the mom and me coming out like, don't you dare use that exacto knife. <laughs> Please don't get yourself set up for, for an emergency room visit. That would be bad. Ugh. All right, so that is both sides using khaki. But um, but um, and as you can see here, we have this other row happening here. See, Bloop. and Bloop. so I'm taking the khaki still, and now I'm going to go into cork brown and blend the two together, kind of like what you're seeing with the feathers. Okay, similar approach here. I'm working down those tiers. Close call. Yeah, I would say that'd be a very close call. That's not a call I want to take. <laughs> I I take no responsibility for that. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and let's see and still thank you so much for those of you who came over thinking it was be dice masters and it wasn't i still don't know why it didn't flip the name over uh but hey you know maiden voyage right so what i'm gonna do is mix these two colors together because i want to carry the cork brown in a little bit with the khaki, I'm like, what was the other color again? I keep talking and like losing track of what it is. Radial arm saw, no, let's not go for the radial arm saw. That's, that's, you know, overkill. It might just be kill, quite frankly. Um, so I'm blending these two together and then I will start thinning out the paint again. And that's gonna go on the next level of the wing feather. Why am I, the next tier, that's what I want, the next tier of feathers on the wings. Like there's a word I'm looking for. <laughs> oh nice nothing wrong with having avoid dremels yes don't do don't i mean you will find the need for certain tools if you're working with terrain but i do not recommend dremels in general when it comes to miniature work i mean i've kit bashed a miniature here and there i absolutely have just please be safe like i said this is the mom coming out please be safe children children please all right, so going back in, now what I'm gonna do is take this mixed color. Again, it's been thinned out, and you can see there is this next tier happening. Let me get it out of the shadow. This next tier happening right through here. So I'm focusing on this run right there, all right? I'm laughing that I keep looking up, and I, all I'm seeing is avoid Dremels. 
So it's going to be a subtle transition and that's what I want. I don't want this to be something that sticks out as a huge jump in the colors. Basically same concept. And yes, I'm getting more quiet because I'm concentrating here. I'm concentrating, okay? I'm concentrating. There's a little subtle one right there. And you'll find it helps to kind of just quickly tuck the brush up against, but not on top of. I'm going below the raised portion of those points on the others. And basically I'm just I'm stopping and I'm looking to make, make sure I am getting the little feathers before jumping into these larger ones is what I'm doing right now. So yes, I wanna get that there. And again, just sort of little touch. Same deal over here. And you can see, again, a little slip there that I'm not too worried about because I'm gonna go over there, but had a slight hiccup, so just go in with a clean brush, pull it off quickly. <laughs> it is, it's a tricky, uh, it's a, it's a game for sure. Thank you, big bearded nerd. It's multitasking for sure. And quite frankly, and I could have probably taken another 10 minutes to figure out why the heck the name kept going up as Dice Masters. But you're all waiting there patiently. I didn't want to lose your viewership because you're like, well, she's not coming back when really I was. Whenever you stream, it's always priority. It's like, well, is the title that critical or are we okay with uh, trying to figure out what happened after the fact? In this case, I'm going to figure out what's going on after the fact and why things got slightly skewed. I'm sure it's just, you know, probably a very simple fix that needs to be addressed. What I'm gonna do is check my own personal account to what I have set up for WizKids. We'll get that figured out because mine worked just fine on Friday. So we shall see. Same thing, I am just getting to the last little bit of the smaller wings here. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. Break on through to the other side and that's all you're gonna get because I don't wanna get a copyright hit. Cause that's a thing that is absolutely a thing but yeah what the hope is is that uh, not just mini mayhem but also much ado about gaming will get transferred over so we can have it happening on both twitch and YouTube uh, da -da -da -da, no another question yes just if you have more questions could you make sure to put question really big you're lucky I looked up when you did um, if you're willing and able, Neverwinter Twitter had a giveaway for some miniatures and they mentioned the winner for the first for the first dragon, but the black one was never mentioned. Oh, I see what you're... Okay, I will touch base and see what the story is with that one. Find out what's going on with that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I don't have an immediate answer for you because I don't control that giveaway, but I can follow up on it. So I will do just that. Okay, so this takes care of that second row. And as you can see, there's that gradual shift in tone because I've mixed the two colors together. Always have a clean, yes, exactly. Um, especially it's a damp brush and then you can quickly wipe off the paint onto a paper towel is the advice there. So you can see that. I'm gonna flip over and do the same thing to the other side. Get a little bit more thinned out paint going. How are we doing here? All right, it's looking good on YouTube. Let me just do a quick flip over to Twitch and take a look. Looks like we're doing okay. Lovely, okay, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So same concept, I am working on this grouping right here. And again, it's working with just the three colors. In this case, I'm gonna start here. Actually had a little bit too much. If you ever find you have too much paint on your brush and you want to quickly blot it off, I, you'll even see me post pictures of this on my socials. I will pull the excess off on my hand. 
to the point sometimes my, you know, my thumb will look technicolored for a day or two. For some reason, I can't keep nail polish on my nails for the life of me, but if I get mini paint on my nails, it stays for a good couple days. I'm not complaining because actually it's kind of fun. But point being, I also use my hands as sort of like quick little blotters. But that also means, I don't know if this is going to be pertinent to you, I do wash my hands before I do a mini painting stream because I don't want to have any lotion on my hands. You want to remove as much oil as possible so that it is not transferring over onto the mini and then making it difficult for the paint to stick to the mini. So really it helps to wash your hands before you start mini painting. Let's put it that way. Because your hands naturally have oils on them. So, you know, depending, that can be something that crops up on you. As you can see, I'm going through the same thing. Keep going around. Now there are some deeper details in here. So you can see I'm working my brush down deeper in there to make sure I get that. You're very welcome, Gnome. I get a little bit too much. I think what's happening is that I am thinking this one area of the paint is thinner than it actually is. Oh, hello. All right, the brush wanted to go for a little walk. And like I said, I'm gonna get the one wing done and I'll work on the other wing off camera. It'll have the same results, same exact results, not to worry about. You're not missing much besides my continual chatter. But honestly, I don't think I can speak for three hours straight. <laughs> After this one, my voice is going to be raspy for the rest of the day. I already can tell. But completely worth it because I do enjoy chatting with you all as well as relaying information wherever I can. My brush is getting slightly dry, so I'm rinsing it completely. Doo, doo, doo. I'm just going to go back in now. Getting these last little ones tucked in close here towards the base of the wing against the armor. Making sure to tuck that paint in as best I can. And I'm just quickly taking a look to see if I can work some of this paint a little bit closer to the other edge. And there we go. Okay, so, and it's a subtle difference. You don't want it to be drastic necessarily, okay? So it's okay to have that subtle shifting happening there. I do see this one little spot. I want to get there. We go. So that's the back. And there you have the front. And so now we're going to move into the next round. So I'm going to rinse my brush. And in this case, I'm going to go back to cork brown and just use cork brown that has not been mixed with khaki. <laughs> it's a musically inclined brush. Oh yes, there have been times I've gone shopping and I've forgotten that my hands are covered with an interesting variety of paints and people are just like, what, what are you? I'm a painter is what I am, thanks. So again, cork brown, cork brown is by nature slightly thicker. I will be thinning that out. Yeah, you want subtle but noticeable is a very good way of putting it. So I'm gonna go in cork brown. And actually what I think I might do because you see how I have this and then this one, this is gonna be the lightest. So I'm gonna go with cork brown. Let me redact. I'm gonna go with cork brown and I'm actually gonna add in a little bit of the dark sand as well. We're gonna do that. So cork brown is gonna be the one that gets a blending, whereas the other two go on pure. Make sense? <laughs> Getting some good painting done, yep. And this has more of a brighter yellow tone to it. It's like a creamy golden color. And again, I'm gonna use the base of my brush. And 
what I'm doing and looking at that in comparison to that. You can see, again, subtle difference between the two, and that should be good. <sighs> oh, jeez. Yeah, don't go to the hospital if you're covered in red paint. That could, that could get a few people jumping at you to the head of a line you don't need to be in. Okay, so now that is the dark sand mixed with the cork brown from the model line of Alejo Paints. Uh, so basically you're taking a tan and mixing it with a, uh, what do I call this, like a light mustard yellow is a good way to put it, classic mustard, classic brown mustard. All right, so I'm going to go in now and I'm going to get these longer, like the pinions, right? We're getting close to the pinions. I'm, I am not an ornithologist, right? She says the word after the fact, like, is this the right word? Won't it? Same concept. I'm going to go in first and just sort of tuck the color in up at the top here and you can see again just that slight variation of gradient it's not quite blending like I did with the feathers up here with getting the colors to work into each other but it is being cognizant of the fact that I'm working in a tiered effort they will all get dry brush with the same color and that sort of helps pull things down and into each other And even though I am doing the painting, if you were to paint these in two separate sessions, I would definitely recommend that you note how many drops to how many drops you're doing with your blending or your mixing, I mean. Uh, and that way you can capture the color again more easily. I have the benefit of just being able to go back and watch myself put the paint out and to get a feel for what I need to do to what I need to do to get the same color or just, you know, guess by eye because I will do that too. Okay, I'm gonna keep going around. So now that I've got that tucked in close, I'm gonna go back over and start working on the wings here. You can see it just works itself in. No problem. And then we're going to get the edge because there is that little raised bit there. So you want to make sure you get the edges of those feathers. Especially they get more pronounced the further down the wings you get. So I'm just making sure to get that. How are we doing on time? 135. Okay, good. We're doing just fine, folks. Do, 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 do. Oh, yes, I want to make sure I get the side here. There we go. And then keep working down the front. Then we'll flip over and go to the back. And we'll get to that last level of the last row of feathers which will be the straight up dark sand. And chances are what I'm going to do is a uh, dry brush and a bone white, which is basically an ivory tone. Uh, what I'm doing, hey nice guy, with those is that it's going to be getting gray washes. So I know that it's going to get a gray tone to it um, as well. I was thinking sand in the first place, but now I'm realizing gray wash is going to give me more of that tone that I want. And I'm also seeing in the monitor, you can see there are those tans that are popping through in the golden tones that play up. Oh, you can't see my mouse, that's right. I have it turned off on OBS. Plus the bone gray is going to lighten things drastically. There's also the joy of while you're painting a mini, you change your mind. I mean, it's not super critical, but let me just pull it back a little bit. And I will do, you know, sometimes in between, just go back and do some touch-ups because remember, I'm also working on a time here. 
you will have more the luxury of being able to take your time, pause and go along at your own pace. But if I ever do that, I do try and address the fact it's like, oh, well, while you were gone, I did this situation. Nope, that's too much. Let's turn this around. That's the other fun thing is if you put too much and you use your thumb, you can actually sometimes pull that right off there. <clears throat> so saturating the white before the white because messing up. What? <laughs> Uh, Zardoz, I think I just answered your question. I can go, I had the luxury of going back and watching if I need to. Uh, but if you were just doing this on your own, then yes, please keep a log of your paint mixing. So many drops to so many drops. The other benefit is that because I saved my palettes, I can just match it after the fact too. Like just take a look and know, okay, I need to do this and this for this. I've been playing with colors for quite a while. It comes in handy. You will find that there's sort of this back and forth you're gonna hit through here. see here. Yeah, there's a couple more over there. All right, I have to pull this back so it's closer to me so I can actually get to what I need to get. So sorry. Let's see here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah with 40K, I can imagine. I'm wanting to make sure you have that consistency going for your uh, armor color. But yeah, I know other artists who will keep more detailed logs. Um, for blending and colors and everything like that. Well, I'm working on a better angle here with my brush. Flip. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it gets a little tricky back here. Let me see if I can actually get that angle in. You can see these feathers sort of curve under. So just keep that in mind when you go into paint this. You're going to find this color sort of persists further on through the back. And the very end feathers here poke out more towards a certain point. They don't go to the very base of the wing, is what I'm saying. So I'm getting in here. Oh, shipped. But yeah, it's always good to hear what other people do with their own painting techniques. Because like I said, people can learn something simply by talking with each other in the chat. In fact, that Zardoz keeps a paint log. Uh, let's see here, Shannon. Considering using a paper... Oh, I already know what the colors are because I have those logged down. It's more the ratio. How long would you say uh, your first mini took of this scale? Okay, that's sushi then. Um, sushi, it's a very large mini tentacle monster thing. That took me... Um, Took me a while. That took me about 20 hours for the first one for a mini this size. This one's probably going to take me about eight. 
all said and done once I do some off-camera work of you know like this you've already seen this process I'm not gonna do the other wing on camera when I can do the other wing off camera and little details like that but quite frankly it's it's more work at the pace you're most comfortable for sure Pialsto, I am not sure what's going on with you because it appears you might be in a different chat. <laughs> there are people over in the live chat. So we will see what's going on with the, the YouTube chat. Again, it's uh, working out the bugs with starting a new program and seeing what's happening there. into place but again your patience and understanding is very much appreciated while I get this all figured out the joys of being a streamer <laughs> uh, let's see. Luxonovitsky. Why did I not see your question? Maybe it jumped up on me. Almost there. And last round is going to be the dark sand on its own. Oh, now I remember what I did. As for the golden tones of the wings, there was a reason for it. Because with the artwork, it was so muted in terms of one solid gray. Now I remember what I was doing. I looked over to the render instead. So I looked at the tone that was happening on the render. I will flip to that in a little bit. And from that sort of came up with my own concept. That's what happened. Like I know there was a reason for this. see here <laughs> gonna do something before Friday oh a duffel bag full of zombies oh <laughs> yikes that doesn't sound good sounds like a movie duffel bag full of zombies coming to you in summer Where would that go? What would that movie be? Yes, that's where my brain went. Yes, that's happening in my mind. See, it's like a mix of Shaun of the Dead and uh, Seven. You sure you wanna know how this thought process goes? <laughs> All right, almost done. This is the last one on this side that I'll need with this particular color blend of the dark sand and cork brown from the model line. There's a little bit that goes there, a little bit there, and here. Now I am because like I said the profile of the edges here get a little bit more pronounced as the feathers get to be larger. So I'm just quickly looking and adjusting as needed. A little bit through here I want to get. Yes sorry, yes sorry. Oops. Yeah, my black background is basically it's just foam core. <laughs> because of things like if I get paint on it, it's just easy enough to paint over that. 
if I want to, or just to buy another dollar's worth of foam core to act as my black background on my table, and if paint gets on it, oh well. All right, so here we go with the tearing down. That side and that side. Look here. Is that? Yeah, it is. All right, so we have that going. Uh, magic item incoming. Wait, what are we talking about? Ooh, hey, you found the chat. So where were you, PL Stowe? That's what I'm wondering. I'm like, hmm, something's going on here. I need, to, I need to see what Restream got up to. Well, as soon as I hit the, you know, stop streaming button, it'll stop streaming theoretically. <laughs> we'll see what happens. What did I miss? Oh, the bag full of zombies. Lovely, lovely. That's gonna be a magic item. Mm-hmm. Now I follow her. Okay, so I have, you can see, there's just this very gradual build and now the last one is going to be dark sand so get that shaken up and as you can see it does have more of that goldeny golden e tone to it I'm gonna go through my brush has been rinsed I do need to thin that out a little bit that needs thinning Little puddles. It's always funny when you find a paint that's like almost your skin tone too. Uh, uh, Oodalali, 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 cheese Louise. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how the paints are going out because this is just basically the base layer. So what I'm doing right now is getting that base bit of color on and I know it's gonna permutate and change as I go in and add on further details. Now what I'm seeing right now already with the dark sand, remember I said sometimes yellows tend to be streaky. I am seeing a little bit of a streaking happening. So I may have to go in after this, once it's dry, and do a lighter coat, a thinner coat of dark sand for more consistent coverage. We shall see. It's looking like I may. which is okay. It's just, you wanna make sure that definitely dries before you do a second layer, otherwise you're just gonna pull the paint up. And that's not what you wanna do. Uh, what is this? This is a mini painting stream, Jive. Welcome. We're gonna be going for a few more minutes. Not too much terribly longer, hoping to wrap this up in about 10 minutes or so. Looks cool, is this the upcoming? No, it's not the upcoming paint night. That's a very good question. Um, the upcoming paint night should be announced soon. And there are a lot more that are happening for 2021. Will be happening at an international level now. So for those of you who are like US only, uh, we are opening up to international stores. They will be having those paint night kits. Uh, and then you'll be able to participate so hopefully I'll have more information for y'all soon on that one. But you could treat this as your own paint night, quite frankly. Um, you could jump into part one over on YouTube and there will be a part three on this where I'm gonna focus on doing the armor. Today was feather work. Feathering the feathers. <laughs> but I do explain and bring it step by step. So if you want to, you can get the Asperia Mini from the Magic the Gathering unpainted miniatures from our Wave 13 line, or Wave 13 round, I should say. And then have your own little at home paint night if you so choose. Let's see, do I find uh, hair or feathers hard to paint? Neither, because actually I quite love them. I very much enjoy painting lots of texture things. Feathers, scales, fabric, I get excited about those because of all the texture work you can do with them. Those are my jam. They really are. All right, now because we're getting to some edges here, I'm just gonna quickly tip and work on getting where I'm seeing some there. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> mm. Fantastic, Jive, go for it. 
It's a beautiful miniature. It really, some lovely detail on it. I've honestly enjoyed painting this so far. Tech goblins aside. <laughs> Work that there. Yeah, I'm looking at this. As it dries, it's not as pronounced, but I think what I am going to do is I am gonna go back in with dark sand thinned out so it's almost like skim milk. Okay, we're going from heavy cream to skim milk. And then that way I can do just one last layer and I think that's gonna help get that little streaking that I'm seeing uh, remedied. Let's see, it's a question. <clears throat> Drying with it, no. No, 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 no. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not accelerate your drying with a heat gun or a hair dryer. Nope, uh, that is too focused of a heat source. What you will start to do is compromise your plastic and its memory. Uh, you'll find your plastic starts to sag, it'll start to bow, it'll start to misshapen. Don't do it. What you can do is say if you had like forced air, you can put the miniature near a forced air source, a vent or the like, and use that to help dry. <coughs> what you don't wanna do is have it so close to a heat source that the heat source is then gonna start affecting the plastic's integrity. That would be bad, so please don't. I would not recommend a heat gun, I would not recommend a hair dryer for trying to dry things faster. Unless like you took the hair dryer and you stood three feet away. I mean, you, you don't want it in direct line with. Like I will use a hair dryer to reshape a plastic. Like say I want a tail going in a slightly more upturned direction or something like that. Yes, I will do that. Um, you can use it in that respect, but for, you know, if you've put all this hard work into painting something, do not recommend. Definitely do not recommend. But, good question, glad you asked. Save yourself some headache later on down the line. Not a bad thing. I missed some feather tips right there. I'll have to get that in just a second. Again, I'm just looking at the edges here. But here you can see the gradient going on here. See that? Yes, that, that happened right there. Patience is a virtue, sometimes. <laughs> All right, let me, there is just this one little bit I noticed I did not catch before. I'm just gonna quickly address that before I forget and move on. Missed a couple little points on those. Okay, I'm gonna rinse this. It can take a while for paint to cure. Uh, you know, rule of thumb is, especially if you're gonna do a lot of detail work, I try and give 24 hours in between to really let the paint take and hold as you want it to. If you're doing a rust job, like I said, a distant heat source sometimes will help, but you gotta be careful. You do need to be cognizant and careful of what you're doing. Um, okay. If you don't have one, look, have you, uh, we have this lovely search right here. Have you checked there to see? There may be one closer, or there may even be one like in your state who'd be willing to ship is another thing to keep in mind. Zardos, I would recommend doing that. Maybe broadening your, sh your search out to like, say like 60 miles or something. Uh -huh. Question, always have a problem with your final clear coat. Always stays tacky. Okay, well my questions for you, my question for you is, what are you using for your clear coat? What do you use to, it's not even in the screen probably now, um, what do you use to seal your minis? Because that is interesting. And there can be a few different reasons for the why of it too. plan here folks is basically to get these all painted and then we will call it for the day on the wings well the wing and then I'll work on the other wing ah, da, 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 da. no I don't stand in between no need to 
no need. It, it's not like um, furniture. You really don't need to sand in between your coats. Keeping an eye out for what it is that you're using. Oh, Minwax. Minwax I always get concerned about, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I have not had good experiences with, min with a Minwax seal, personally. I have found it has kept some miniatures tacky and nothing I could do, I had to strip the miniatures. Quite frankly, when I you know tried to use them in wax, that was not a good result. Um, hmm. Yep. Nope. I don't sand. I mean, terrain. I might, depending on what I'm doing, to give a distressed look. but not on the miniatures. Obviously I just got quiet because I'm starting to concentrate again. <laughs> I'm focusing. Oh. I'm not familiar with that one, hey nice guy. Okay, so let's talk about my preferred sealers then. Okay, the ones that I have found great success with. Uh, Vallejo has their own, uh, matte, satin, and gloss by all means, especially if you get like the kits and stuff, it comes in them. Um, those have worked out okay for me. I also uh, like to use um, plaid. It It's not Mod Podge, but it is called Mod Podge Ultra. What it is is a spray paint, not spray paint. <laughs> it is a sprayable form of um, Mod Podge essentially. And it goes on beautifully. It protects beautifully and it's a pump action so for those of us who live in cold environments you know massive snowstorm for the past like five days uh you're able to still spray your minis down after the fact and it's not like you have to deal with an aerosol factor so i'll either use vallejo or i will grab my mod, po mod podge ultra that comes in matte as well as gloss and i have to say the matte is very matte and the gloss is very glossy um so how well, I think I just answered the question there. Um, so those would be the two I would start with recommending. If it's something where you've bought yourself a kit, then use what Vallejo has put into the kit. Absolutely, by all means, go for it. Keep in mind, I also will jump between paints. Um, so right now I'm using Vallejo because quite frankly, it's easier for me to bring the little bottles up here and have a case ready to go of you know all the colors I could potentially need. But if I'm doing other miniatures, I have been known to use uh, craft paints, not even kidding. So for those, I will tend to grab, gravitate towards the Mod Podge Ultra. But I have found that has worked beautifully as a sealer for my miniatures. And again, you can even take the cap off because it's a pump action. So you can take the cap off and you can go in with a brush instead and just you know, basically paint things up. Hello, Geek Movie House. I am doing well. Thank you for jumping in. We're going to start wrapping things up. Oh, geez, it's already past two. I'm almost there. I am almost there. Just getting these last few wingtips. But that gives you a sense of the, how the colors go. Oh, do, 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 do. oh, that might be it. Nice guy. Um, sometimes things that are multi-purpose aren't always a multi-purpose. Okay, uh, I especially find with acrylic paints, some things that are marked for acrylic and oil, for some reason, acrylic gets tackied. It just it has like almost like this sticky residue are you getting like a stickyish residue to it um yeah that that might be part of the issue then all right i'm looking up the side here 
to catch any edge work. But that, I think I will have to go back in because it's not showing on the camera, it's very subtle, but there is some slight streaking happening with the dark sand. So I will go back in and I'll take care of that uh, once it's dried a little bit. Because if I do it now, it's just gonna pull the paint up and it's gonna make it blotchy and streaky and texture and don't wanna do that. But you can see today, hit the points I wanted to hit. We got the lovely blending of the top feathers here done. So it went from this nice dusky gray blue up into a skyish blue to the ghost white at the top there, doing a feather blending effect with just a quick little tap on the top of my fingertip to help encourage the blending. Then for here, we worked colors down. Pardon me, starting up with the khaki from the game color line, mixing the cork brown and khaki together, going to cork brown mixed with dark sand and then to pure dark sand. So that is the gradient I have done on this side. And I will of course go back in and do that side. And then let me show you where my brain was going with that one. Uh, I'm gonna go over to image share. So let me, where is it that I wanna do? Um, I'm gonna hide that, let's, I need to go to image rotation. So, oh great. So this is the miniature itself, so you can see what it looks like unpainted for those of you joining us. There is the official artwork from the card again that I have been using as uh, part of my reference. And then it should cycle through quickly. Here we go, that's the card, that's the official card that I had pulled to keep an eye on things. But because, like I said, the wings were a little bit more muted and not as detailed as the foreground, you can see back here, that's where I was going. You can see back here on our render, I preferred how those wings looked. I forgot I had done this. So that should be coming up soon, I hope. If not, I can just do a really quick thing uh, through my OBS if you want me to. Yeah, okay, so I think I need to do that. So let me quickly, hold on, we're gonna put that into hiding. And then let me go over here and just quickly, where did I put that? I put that, let me put the render really quick. And you've seen it on the thumbnails and everything as well that have been going up on socials, hopefully have been going up on socials. Is it gonna have it there for me? Where is it? Where did you go? Uh, you know what I'll do? I will do, I'm just gonna pull up the packaging on a standard non-slide setup. Oh, okay, well we're gonna do that. You get to see some behind the scenes fancy footwork of, I need to reduce this image. Yoink, let me. And let me pull, okay, here, so now you can see um, because I liked the look of the wings better on the render. That's what I'm using for the wings because it had better detail than the official artwork. So that's where I kind of went a little bit, you know, dividing the two and putting them together is basically what my game plan was with that one. So you can see for the wings with that, I'm using that to mimic these wings. And again, I know I'm gonna be doing dry brushing with bone white on this, which means it's gonna make it a little bit paler. And then that'll give me something closer to how the render of the wings look. That's why the wings shifted from the one that was for the official artwork. Okay, so I think that, -na -ma -na -ma -na, that pretty much pulls it to a close for today. I will make sure her other wing does get addressed. So this one's done. This one needs to get taken care of. And then what I will do is I am going to go through and I will dry brush the one wing. So next week, what you're gonna see is my dry brushing the other wing, after I've put a wash on it, I'm thinking, oh, maybe not, I'm gonna debate. I'll let you know what I did on the in-between, how about that? So I'll let you know what happened on the in-between to get things going between this one and this one and get it closer to finish. The other thing I'm going to do is, because it's basically just painting, I am gonna go through and I'm gonna put the base color for the armor on so that you can see how I do the detail work and everything else because it's, you know, if I tell you I painted the armor this color, you will know that's the color you need to paint it because what I'd like to do is try and get this as done as possible uh, next week. So that being said, don't forget next week I will be here. Hopefully we'll get the name thing figured out between Twitch and Restream because I don't know why they don't wanna play nicely today for me. Little disappointed, but such is life. 
Uh, thank you everyone who stuck around, asked fantastic questions, shared some wonderful information with each other, which was fantastic to see in the house as well. Um, and for all of you over on Twitch, thank you so much. For everyone over on YouTube, thank you so much. Uh, this will be a VOD over on our YouTube channel for sure. We'll see what happens with uh, Twitch and all that goodness. Uh, but, 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 but one last time before you go, don't forget up for pre-order now. This handsome, deadly, decaying fellow, the green, the adult green Dracolich. Okay, so this is available for pre-order. This is part of the D&D Icons of the Realms Boneyard set. And they are just gorgeous. <laughs> I'm saying this about undead creatures, but it's a thing. Uh, let me quickly flip over to overhead. Seeing another, I mean, look at this. Look at this. You know what we're going to do? We're going to... Let's put you into hiding. That gives me more room. But look at that. I mean, <laughs> so many lovely details. Really, really gorgeous miniature. Um, MSRP, a suggested MSRP is $69.99. I don't have the SKU in there yet, but I will plug it into YouTube and everything like that. Keep an eye out. There have been so many wonderful, uh, there's been media coverage. There have been influencers that are sharing this. So please check out what they have to share as well and take a look at their socials posts. But this is, I really like the green one. Okay, I like the green one. I am I am playing mother's favorite right now. The green one is my favorite of the two. I know, she said it. She picked one that's a favorite. Okay, kids? Um, all right, so thank you so much, everyone. While you're here, if you are new to either, please make sure to subscribe or follow. That is wonderful and fantastic to see. Uh, it is pre-painted Jive Afro. It is a pre-painted miniature. It comes out of the box just like that. It is a beautiful thing. And uh, let's go to the main screen because, you know, you don't need to look at my table anymore. Uh, if you have any questions, you can check out in the description below in YouTube. You can see all of our social links, but you can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram as WizKids. Uh, so check those all out. You'll get some fantastic fantastic updates and things like that. Don't forget, uh, you can also catch us for other things like our board game stream called Much Ado About Gaming with Jessa. She is more than happy to update you on our board games that we have coming out and all that goodness. Uh, and then uh, we just had them happen last week, the Scott Porter unboxing. This time it is for the Marvel HeroClix Fantastic Four Future Foundation. I do recommend you check those out if you are a HeroClix fan or you are a fan of Marvel in particular. I think that's it for now. I will see you next week. We'll have some more fun. We'll hopefully get Asperia to the point of a respectable completion. And until then, I'm going to wrap this up like I always do. I am the Muse. Thank you for joining me. Be good to yourselves and be good to each other. Until next week, everyone. Bye.